through many seal feeds. My name is Anna and I'll be talking you through this seal feed. And I'm also joined by two of our wonderful aquarists, Sarah and Michael, who will be feeding our resident harbour seals. So before we get started, just a few safety announcements. Please keep your hands behind the barriers and similarly don't dangle anything over the side. And lastly, if you have any small children, please do not hoist them on the railing. Okay, great, so now the boring bit's done, I'll do our introductions to the stars of the show. So we have three resident harbour seals, and their names are Laura, Benji and Cody. So Laura is our oldest, largest and only female seal. She has become quite shy of late, so she may bob her head up every now and again. So she does have light grey fur, and she is just down in the corner over there. She joined us from Belgium in 2005 and is getting ready to celebrate her 32nd birthday. Oh, so for a seal this is pretty ancient, it's out in the wild, they'll typically only live between 25 and 30 years old. But due to medical advancements, Laura is expected to live well into her 40s. For those of you with a keen eye, you will have noticed that one of Laura's eyes has some discoloration to it. Now this is just due to a cataract she's developed and since had removed. These are very quite spots all over his head and neck. And this is typically how we tell him apart from his little brother. So Cody is the baby of the group at 8 years old. However, he is no longer our smallest seal, as he has recently overtaken his big brother in size. The easiest way to tell our boys apart though is through their personalities. Usually, Benji is very cool, calm and collected, whereas Cody is much cheekier. If Sarah turns her back, Cody is more than likely to try and steal a couple of fish from the bucket. You'll see that our aquarists are doing some activities with our seals this afternoon, and as much as they are fun for us to watch, they are purely for our seals' benefit. They are incredibly intelligent animals and they need to remain mentally stimulated, allowing them to stay under the water for extended periods of time. As well as being excellent divers, seals are excellent hunters. Out in the wild, they use their heightened senses to hunt pretty much anything. They are known as opportunistic feeders, so this means that by nature they are not particularly fussy. However, the same can be said for our seals, who recently have been acting like fussy toddlers, and they will only eat sprat and herring. These are their favourite fish, as they're incredibly high in fats and oils, which help them to maintain their blubber. Blubber is a thick layer of fat that encases their entire body and keeps them nice and cosy in the winter months. In some areas, this blubber can reach up to 10 centimetres thick, and this is definitely helped by the fact that our seals eat more fish than our entire aquarium combined each and every day. So they'll all roughly eat 3 to 5 kilos each of sprat and herring, and then slightly more in the winter just to keep that blubber nice and thick. In the UK, we do have two types of native seals. We have harbour seals, otherwise known as common seals, and we also have grey seals. Ironically though, grey seals are much more common than common seals. Grey seals are typically larger than harbour seals and have a longer, more canine-like snout. Grey seals are also born with that fluffy white coat, which they'll then shed in favour of their adult fur. Whereas harbour seals are born as miniature versions of themselves. While we can excuse you getting a little bit muddled up between grey seals and harbour seals, our biggest pet peeve at Deep Sea World is when people confuse our seals with sea lions. Although they do look slightly similar and they are both part of the animal family known as the pinnipeds, they are two completely different animals and there's three easy ways to tell them apart. So the first of which is their ears. As you can see from our seals, they do have two small holes at the either side of their head. These are just small internal ears which get covered by a flap of skin when they dive under the water. Whereas sea lions have much larger, more external ears. If you've ever seen Shrek, sea lion ears look slightly like that, just less green. The next difference is their movement on the land. As I'm sure you've seen demonstrated by our boys there, they tend to use a shuffling motion with their pelvis, 
That isn't the most graceful looking movement and they do often look like giant blubbery caterpillars as Cody is showing us there. Oh and so is Benji. Sea lions on the other hand are capable of rotating their flippers and using more of a walking motion. And the final difference is their vocalisation. Seals typically use snorts and grunts in order to communicate, whereas sea lions use that very loud and deep bark. If you are ever lucky enough to see seals out in the wild, we do urge you not to approach them. As much as these guys are cute, cuddly looking water puppies there interacting with our aquas, the same cannot be said for wild seals. They can become incredibly dangerous when they want to be, particularly when they feel threatened. And if you ever come across an injured seal, please call the likes of the SSPCA. They are in fact a category 1 animal on the danger rating scale, which is the same level of danger as our sand tiger sharks down in the underwater tunnel. Now this comes from a bacteria in their saliva. If you get bitten by a seal, you are susceptible to contracting something called seal finger. Now this is quite a nasty infection that if left untreated can result in the loss of limbs. So take it from us and admire from afar. And lastly, our seals do face lots of threats out in the wild. Not only from predators such as sharks and orcas, but us as humans actually pose the biggest threat to our seal population. Now this is through things like hunting, as well as pollution, and most importantly micro pollution. So this is where fish eat small amounts of plastic. Our seals will then eat this fish and in turn ingest the plastic. This plastic will then start to accumulate in their bellies, making them feel full all the time, even though they are technically starving. However, don't fret too much. There are plenty of things you can do to combat this issue, such as recycling, as well as taking part in beach clear up, and most importantly, by just not littering in general. So next time you go to drop some litter, think of these cute wee faces and hopefully you'll think twice. Okay, so I will wrap up the talking portion of our seal feed this afternoon. Feel free to watch Sarah feed the boys the rest of their fish there. And as always, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to come and ask. I hope you've gained your seal of approval and I hope you enjoy the rest of your visit. So if we could end this seal feed in a round of applause for our seal and for our aquas. Thank you everyone. <laughs> 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 I think they're gonna get... <laughs>